What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Marcus Jose of the Bull Co. And today we're gonna talk about, shh, back, sit. We're gonna talk about excited dogs and how to get them to walk properly on the leash. Now in a moment, I'm gonna play some clips I made with Drocky here yesterday. And it's gonna demonstrate some of the things that I've been talking about. But I wanna just give you a little bit of introduction on this dog and how we, we fixed him. Now when he first came to me, um, like you'll see, he was very, very excited all the time. Um, you know, being on the leash meant he would, he could smell anything he wanted, do anything he wanted, be anything he wanted. And unfortunately, that's not a recipe for a good companionship, right? You can't walk a dog like that. It's no fun for you, and it definitely is no fun for him, although he might think it. Now that Draco's a lot calmer, he's absolutely a lot better on the leash, and he's a lot better companion because he's not trying to drag you everywhere. The first thing we did with Draco was to calm his mind, okay? Um, you'll see him now as he starts to relax, he lays down because he really knows that we're not going to go anywhere if I don't lead him. Before, he would want to lead himself, thus pulling, smelling, marking at any time he wanted. Now the first thing we did with Draco was to get his mind right. Okay, so the way that I fix Draco is what I call sensory deprivation. It's a technique that I've developed myself, and what it is is that, and it isn't what it you sounds like, it isn't me locking the dog away by himself at all, no, it's not that. But as soon as the dog gets here, I set the tone and I set the routine. Um, he comes to understand that the only time that he's gonna get stimulation from me, affection or, or, or love from me, is only when he's on leash or only when we're doing something that he has to work for me, okay? I think a lot of you make the mistake of, of thinking the dog's more like your son or daughter rather than a companion, right? A companion should be there when you need them to show them affection and them show you affection, but if you do it too much or if you do it to where they can get the affection at any time, that means the dog's gonna overreact or react or, or even be however they wanna be so they can get that attention at any time. This dog has under, or understands now that the only thing that's gonna get him his, his attention is when he relaxes. Shh, leave it. And that's what, the, that's what we've been practicing with him. The reason he's laying down with me while he's on the leash is because we've been working. When he's on the leash, he relaxes. We, if it comes to the point where, where we have to wait until he relaxes, I'll wait. I open the door. If he's too excited, I tell him to wait. When he relaxes, then we come outside. But it's the routine of making sure that he waits before he transitions to a new medium. Because if we go to the door and he gets crazy and we just walk, walk out the door, number one, the, tra the energy has translated from inside to outside. Number two, you taught him no matter how he's acting, he can go, he's gonna go outside anyway. The reason he's relaxed right now is because he understands I am in control. We are gonna walk where we go, where, where I wanna walk, or we're gonna sit when I wanna sit, okay? That's the reason why he's relaxing now, and he's a good dog. When he came here, I didn't think, I never thought he was a bad, I don't think, I don't think dogs are bad dogs, period. But they're not, not I don't wanna say trained, I say, I say they're mistreated. And I don't mean in a way of, of animal abuse. Every single person that sends me their dog loves their dog, or else they wouldn't pay the money uh, to send me their dog, right? But the thing about it is, it isn't training that they lack, well it is, but it's the way they treat their dog is where they're really making the big mistakes. I treat the dog correctly. I treat a dog how a dog should be treated. Do you see how I only give him attention when he's relaxed? That's, the, that's, that's, that's like the main thing. If your dog gets attention only when they're relaxed, don't you think if it's in a dog's nature to want attention from, from their human and the only time they get attention is when they relax, don't you think they would relax a lot more? I 
think so. Actually, I know so. Shh, leave it. I know so, okay? And if you guys want to practice more on only giving your dog attention when they're relaxed and correcting the times that they're overexcited and waiting when they're overexcited, you're gonna have a lot better dog. Anyways, without further ado, we're gonna play some clips I made yesterday. This video is all about properly walking your dog and how to get an excited dog to walk properly. And that was number one. You guys enjoy. Proper leash placement. The lead should be placed at the top of their neck underneath the back of the head. Now, if this were to slide down, you need to stop and you need to adjust the lead back to the top of the neck. Now, I don't have a problem with harnesses and regular collars. I, I think they're great to use, but you need to use these things after you've taught your dog commands and how to walk on a leash. A lot of people want to start with walking their dog on a harness and guess what? Your dog will never learn because they're just going to be able to pull you anywhere they want to go. Also, you are looking for the ears back and tail flat or below the waist. This will give you the impression that your dog is calm and ready to go on a walk. So right now, we had just got done. He is a lot calmer than he when started, but I promise you guys, when we started and he was overexcited, we did not go anywhere. I stood here and waited until he was calm enough to take him on a walk. Because like I said, it's all about the habits that you teach him. Let's go, buddy. Dogs are never truly 100% trained. You're always training. When you're walking your dog on a daily basis, even if they walk absolutely amazing, you don't, can, you don't allow them to do the things that they've done before. You always keep that expectation of how they're supposed to walk at your heel, paying attention to you. Now, as you get home is also routine. Everything you do with your dog should be routine because they're going to learn that routine with repetition. And also that means if you have bad routines with your dog, they're also going to learn bad habits. Okay? So like after you get home from your walk, how are you bringing down their energy level? How are you getting them to relax again? Because a walk is fun, stimulating. Never too much, but it's fun and stimulating. How do you not get that outside energy to go inside your house? I think that's where a lot of people fall short. Now remember, energy does not dissipate, it merely transitions. It, it transitions to either another person, another medium, and you don't want outside energy to transition into your house. Either from the backyard inside or from the front yard inside, you never want that outside energy to transition. So we're gonna teach you, after your walk, how you transition from outside energy to indoor energy. And yes, they're both different. Now how you walk with your dog is gonna set the pace of how you treat them or how you interact with each other. Having boundaries while on the walk, not allowing the dog to overreact in situations or not allowing the dog to lead ever um, is going to translate into the home life. How they respect you as an owner, if they respect you as an owner. And if you don't think so, dogs can sense when you don't have control. And they will lash out because they think they can, they are the ones that are in control of the situation. Now, a daily walk is very, very important for a dog. But also, what's equally important is how they walk. If they are if they are tracking, if they are sniffing the ground, if they're marking every two seconds, they're not getting the benefits of that walk and neither are you. This is a psychological thing for them. And if they are overly, overly excited on the walk, pulling the whole time, they're not getting the benefit, okay? Two weeks ago, I got a dog on the yard named Draco. Now Draco, when I first seen him, was very high strung very energetic, pulling on the leash, lunging, uh, uh, breathing hard 
I mean, he just got out of an air-conditioned car and he's acting like he ran a marathon, okay? So he was showing all the signs of having high anxiety and the signs of a dog that is just spoiled, was never, was never conditioned correctly on the right routines and he just lashed out and acted out at any time and all the time. So with him being here, my plan was to show this dog some routine and some expectations. So in the morning, we go for walks. While on that walk, he gets to use the restroom one time. There's no sniffing, there's no tracking. He does not get to leave. He's either at my hill or behind. And this is a non-negotiable. And this should be a non-negotiable for you as well. At every step of the way, as soon as you walk out that front door. Now, while we go on the walk, it's very calm. I'm not doing things to heighten his senses and vice versa, I'm making sure he's not doing things to heighten my senses. So we both walk very calmly. So now we're gonna show you how to transition energy from outside to inside. Okay, so first, we're gonna open the door, we're gonna step inside. Your dog should be looking and waiting to come inside, not barging right in. You give him a down sit. Wait, eye contact's good, ears are back, he's calm, <laughs> he's also tired. We're gonna have him come in, let's go. Wait, when we get into the door, he's not to run inside. We are to wait until his energy relaxes. And once he relaxes, then we release him. Good job, buddy. Thank you so much for watching the video today, guys. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Please go through my other videos. I got a lot of training stuff on here for you and stuff that actually works, demonstrated for you live and, and, and the first time I've done it, okay? All right, guys. So anyways, thank you so much. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. We'll talk to you guys soon.